Welcome to the You World Order Showcase Podcast. My name is Jill Hart. I'm the founder of The Empathy Edge, and this show is built for up-and-coming life, health, and transformational coaches who are looking to share their coaching journey, grow their practice to change more lives, and be the change they want to see in the world. If you're an up-and-coming coach and would like to be featured on this podcast to talk about your coaching journey, struggles, and success stories, please visit jointheuworldorder.com. And don't forget to subscribe to get notifications of the daily content. Hi, and welcome to the You World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we are talking with Lucy. Lucy's a certified creative mind mindset coach. She has written a book of empowerment for children between the ages of 11 and 13 called Finding Sophia, Be Inspired, available on Amazon. She also writes for various publications on medium.com for her own blog, her own journey of discovery, how to live from her soul's wisdom on purpose, and with self-love has given her the greatest and most valuable lessons of her life. She knows those valuable gems are also there for her clients. Lucy also loves to draw and paint in her free time. Please help me welcome Lucy to the show. show, Lucy Christig. So tell us, tell us a little bit about you. What are you doing? How'd you get started? All the stuff. Okay. So, um, I am a coach and I'm like a personal growth coach or a mindset coach. Um, And I uh, use creativity and mindfulness as some of my tools. Okay. So how did that look when you're, you're working with your clients? So, um, well, basically um, creativity, um, everybody, everyone is creative. A lot of people, um, you know, often say that, oh, you know, I'm not creative. I can't, I can't do this or whatever. But if we weren't here, we wouldn't be create. We wouldn't be creative if we weren't here. So creativity is comes in all kinds of different forms, and um, it does some beautiful things. It um, first of all brings up curiosity. So it helps you to get into the space where you can begin to ask yourself questions, you know, whys or what ifs, or I wonder, right? Um, Which opens up all kinds of possibilities. And another thing it does is it brings back play into your your sort of awareness and and thinking. So, Play and creativity, for one thing, put us into a space where we can create and that that sort of that creative energy comes up, it rises up and can can really sort of surprise you. And then the, the other thing it does is it helps you to get into the subconscious mind. So that is where all the programs uh, run, all the, the beliefs that we're not aware of, um, they're residing in the subconscious mind. And we often don't even realize a lot of times that, that half of those things are there. Um, we're so often in our conscious mind um, that the subconscious runs things under the surface. And um, so using creativity really um, helps you get into that subconscious mind, helps you be curious about it and sort of play with it. Um, so that's the creativity part of it. And the mindfulness is for awareness. So it's awareness of what goes on in your mind, in your thinking brain, in, um, in uh, just what your body is feeling, you know, what what sensations are happening in your body as you think things or as you're experiencing things. Um, the body has such um, such a way of communicating that it's very subtle at first. And a lot of times we're not paying attention to that, the subtle things, you know, oh, a little pain here. Okay, went away, never mind. Um, you know, and then... <laughs> 
And then the, the more we push it aside, the louder the body gets. And um, that's where, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of times we can be led into disease or disease. And uh, when, when things become chronic, unfortunately, a lot of times that's when people sort of do pay attention and it just makes things a little bit harder. Not that not the thing things can't heal, but it just takes long a bit longer, a little bit more in depth, and and so on. So I don't know if that explained it. <laughs> it did. It actually explained a lot. So who are your ideal customers, or who are the people that you're trying to reach? Um, I'm really passionate about helping creative women uh, ready who are ready for change so that they can navigate the ups and downs of their life journey uh, without second guessing themselves. Because I find that's, that's something I went through for a long time. And, um, you know, when you can do that, navigate those ups and downs and feel secure and confident through them, then you can really light up about life again and start loving your way through life. That's really beautiful. So um, in terms of creative women, are they entrepreneurs? Are they just, you know, moms? How, how would they know that they're your people? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, obviously, you know, any anyone in this work would tell you it's for everyone. Um, but I think uh, creative women would probably be more, um, I would probably look more towards solopreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I like that. So how did you get started in it? I'm sorry? How did you get started? What, what motivated you to, to become a coach in this, this area? Well, I kind of went through my own uh, crossroad in life. Mm -hmm. um, my father and I had this wonderful close connection. He was such an open-hearted man and he had this mustache and smile that would literally light up a room. And whenever I was going through difficulties, he would always tell me, Lou, never give up. And his eyes would well up in with tears and kind of just the way mine do every time I talk about him. And on my 40th birthday, he passed away and my world came crashing down around me. His death was a turning point in my life. Before that, I had no idea really who I was or what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was mostly doing what other people wanted me to do, uh, to please them. Mm -hmm. And after his passing, I really felt like I was hit by a ton of bricks. And it just really revealed to me probably years of depression that I hadn't fully uh, acknowledged or realized before. Mm -hmm. To the point where um, I really didn't see the point of being here. Um, and so when I was going through that, I, I was on antidepressants for a, a little while and I knew that I didn't really want that. And in the back of my mind, I could always hear my dad saying, Lou, never give up. So I decided I was going to try some self-help and I went into a bookstore searching for some insight. This is, a, this is kind of cool. <laughs> And I wanted to be able to lift myself out of this and move forward. So I'm also a writer. So I, I love books and I love the smell of, you know, printed paper. Right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. So here I am in the bookstore. I've got, you know, this wonderful scent of raw printed paper around me. And I began searching and I didn't really know what to look for. And so in the back of my mind, I kind of went, dad, help me find the right, the right book. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at different titles, 
you know, still just kind of wondering. And then behind me, I heard something. I turned around and a book had literally fallen off a shelf. Oh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a spiritual book. Mm -hmm. And the minute I picked it up, I could feel chills running up and down my entire body. And I listened and I started there. So um, a couple of years later and, you know, lots of spiritual and self-help books after, um, I was scrolling through my timeline on, uh, timeline on Facebook and you know the ads that are that are there, which I never normally click on, but this one ad kind of it was the it was another one of those weird moments where time kind of felt like it stood still. And this ad kind of just grew and, and jumped out at me. And I went, okay, I gotta pay attention to this one. And I decided to go for it. It was a course for creative mindfulness coach. And it was a year long course. And um, so that together with spiritual teachings of oneness, I now have the tools and the desire, the passion to bring this out to, pe to other people because it made such a difference in my life. And it can really help people to move from a stressful um, sort of state of mind and state of being or mm -hmm. anxiety to being able to quiet their mind and listen to the whispers of their soul. And they go from feeling lost to understanding themselves better, knowing what their values and beliefs are rather than adopting them from other people. Um, and I help uh, people feeling that have been feeling stuck to freeing up the emotions that have been keeping them stuck there. And the best part of all is they get to light up with curiosity and play. And so it's, um, it's a really fun and um, insightful uh, journey. But what do you think your most, your favorite success story is? Oh, I mean, your gosh. story, your personal story is pretty inspiring, but have you, have you helped yeah. somebody just and been able to watch the transformation? Yeah. Um, there was uh, one lady that had come to me. She was having um, her actual story is really interesting um but she had come to me um she was going through relationship problems mm -hmm. and while I'm not really you know a uh, relationship counselor kind of thing mm -hmm. everything but I do believe and my work speaks to everything starts inside you right so I just spoke to her I I helped her from that standpoint for her to understand herself and what she felt she really needed in the relationship and in her life. And so she was very dependent on this other person and um, it had been begun to, to be kind of um, verbally abusive, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, you know, with the work that we did, she was able to understand herself better and what she needed and she broke free from it and she was so grateful and she's like a changed person and um she's actually had to deal with some very difficult things after that um that happened in her life um she had a someone very close to her suicided and so it kind of been been there to help her as well through that which is and and she's she's dealing with it beautifully it's amazing it's amazing what the tools that you can find along the way that can help you i mean you're you've given her some tools to deal with one situation but those tools bleed over into helping in other even more traumatic situations 
Absolutely. So what are your thoughts on um, being a coach and finding yourself an entrepreneur too? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, um, um, yeah, it's it's a little bit uh, different. Yeah, like, you know, we spoke a little bit before about this where, um, you know, you you have this passion that you want to help people. You've got all these tools and everything, but when you're starting from scratch, it, it can be a little bit daunting um, getting the wheel moving. Um, and I think, you know, it's probably, it might be good in the sense that it's part of the process of clearing what you, you as the coach uh, still need to clear in order to reach the, the right people that are waiting for your message. Um, However, you know, it's it's a whole other learning curve, marketing and which has can have a stigma to it, but it's basically just getting the word out and creating relationships with people, letting people know what you have and what you offer and what you're like, you know, because different people jive with different, you know, certain people and others jive with others. So it's uh there's a lot more to it than just having the passion to help. Yeah, that's been one of the things that I find most coaches strug- do struggle with. It's the, the awareness that, oh, I have to put myself out there and I- I'm not really sure how to do that. And I'm not really sure who to talk to. And there's there's all these little things that kind of go on in your head too. Yeah. So What's the one thing that you would really hope that everyone would take away from this conversation? Um, I think the main thing is that each and every person has creative genius sitting inside them. And it's a matter of digging it out and having the self uh, awareness and the self worth to start looking and to have the curiosity to start looking. The curiosity and also, there's a lot to it, I think, but um, also to have um, the self love and the self care to to honor yourself and and find what is deep inside you that wants to be revealed and shared. I I couldn't say it better myself. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I too believe that everyone has something unique to them that they were gifted with to share with the world. And most of us have been trying trained to just push it down. So, yeah. and it sounds like your job is to drag it back up again in a fun and helpful way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I feel like people, especially in the last couple of years with everything that's gone on, mm-hmm. a lot of people are um, sitting in stress um, with like whenever you've got, you know, difficult emotions and they're not acknowledged, you just kind of push them down and push them down and push them down. That causes stress in the body. And mm. I feel disease. like, in, sorry? And disease. And disease, exactly. Well, and that's the thing. The more it's pushed down and pushed down and disregarded and saying, no, no, I can't show that. I can't, I can't see that in myself. Um, the more, the more chronic it turns, right? And the more chronic it turns, the more it goes towards disease. And so I am, uh, offering, I'm now offering like a two hour online workshop to help people just a a really sort of quick thing that can help people, um, learn, um, newer, uh, not newer, but healthier responses to dealing with stress and to um, sort of working through the stress. So um, that's something that I'm going to be 
offering coming up and I'm just seeing how many people are interested in, in doing that with me. That would be awesome. How do people get a hold of you to get on a wait list or whatever for that? The or best any? way, yeah, the best way would be through my website and my email, which is info at lucychristig.com. Okay, and we'll be sure. that from, from my contact on my website. Okay, we'll be sure to put that, those links in the description too. Awesome. Lucy, it has been amazing having you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much, Jill. Thanks for, listening for what you're doing. to the You World Order Showcase program. I hope today's episode has inspired you to consider how you can leverage your unique skills and talents to be the change you want to see in the world. Be sure to subscribe to the daily episodes. Here are three ways I can help you in your coaching practice for free. One, if you're a coach just starting out, you can head over to heartlifecoach.com forward slash PTP invite. If you're an up and coming coach and would like to be featured on the podcast, please visit jointheuworldorder.com. And finally, if you're feeling scattered and lack focus, I invite you to hop on a call with me to get some clarity, strategy, and resources to get your practice back on track to reach the most people without feeling salesy. You can find that link at heartlifecoach.com forward slash e. We will see you on the next podcast.